available now for viewing on Amazon Prime. I saw it in the theater, not bragging, just saying. I saw it in the theater. I think it might have been a very brief theatrical run. If you can see it in the theater, you know my take. Everything is better in a theater. Being the Ricardos, this is a story about, based on facts, based on real life, about Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz in a period of time during the production of I Love Lucy when the House Un-American Activities Committee, House Un-American Act, yeah, mush mouth. The HUAC, the, the Red Scare, Joseph McCarthy era time, um, they were targeting Lucille Ball as being a communist, which at the time was career death and for some people, <laughs> career suicide and for some people suicide. Um, directed and written by Aaron Sorkin and starring Nicole Kidman as Lucille Ball and Javier Bardem as Desi Arnaz. I thought this was pretty good. There is currently, as I record this, uh, either just wrapping up or ongoing, I think it's just wrapping up, a Turner Classic Movies TCM podcast called The Plot Thickens. And each season they do a eight or ten or however many episodes series delving into uh, somebody's biography or something about a specific film. And the current one is about the life of Lucille Ball, and it's excellent. So I've, I've been like just finishing that up now as I'm going to see being the Ricardos. So... I can tell you that the, the film is relatively faithful to what was going on and the, the cast and the people therein. Um, it's presented sort of as a flashback. It opens with elderly, aged, shall we say, people who are, they're credited as being, you know, producer of I Love Lucy, writer of I Love Lucy, but in, in fact, they're actors and they're, they're recognizable actors. So it opens with, um, among other people, Ronnie Cox and Linda Lavin, who's always great to see as the, you know, latter day people looking back, sort of, they're not, they don't narrate it throughout. They just cut back to them uh, occasionally commenting on what was going on and giving you a little insight. But the film is presented as a, as a narrative feature that takes place. I think it's over the course of about a week or so while I Love Lucy is trying to record or, or you know, write, rehearse and perform slash film an episode of the show while all this who act stuff is Lucy a red is she a communist thing is going on and it's will they get the show done and will she emerge unscathed from this scandal and and where will it lead um, amongst all of that it it touches on a lot of the realities of you know some of the cast not getting along uh, J K Simmons plays uh, William Frawley which is it's in your mind if you know the the two actors it seems like an odd choice but he's pretty great and and, and somewhat true to the character of William Frawley in real life from what I've read. And then you have people like uh, Tony Hale plays, I think, the head writer or the producer, executive producer. And if I can take a second to say what a treasure Tony Hale is, who gets like probably no credit, but uh, a lot of people know him from Arrested Development and other things, but he's, he's excellent in this. He's, you know, obviously he's funny, but also he can do drama really well. And I, just watching this movie, I was watching Tony Hale and I'm like, this guy's great. And like, nobody talks about him. The biggest um, issue I had going into the movie, or the biggest thing I wondered if it would be an issue going into this was seeing extremely recognizable actors portraying extremely recognizable actors. I've never seen the Will Smith, Muhammad Ali movie, but it's one of those things where I always felt like, oh, am, am I just gonna be seeing Will Smith? Am, am I never gonna see the character he's supposed to play? Uh, Will Smith's a very good actor, so I'm get, my guess is if I do watch that, it probably will go fine for me, but I wondered, Am I just going to be looking at Nicole Kidman going, well, that's not Lucy, that's Nicole Kidman. Am I going to look at Bardem and say, well, that's not Desi, that's Bardem. Yes, to a degree, but they're both really good actors. And there's an amount of hair and makeup that goes a long way. Uh, ultimately, did, was I ever fooled into thinking I was watching Lucy in this movie? No, but I was watching the character of Lucy, if that makes any sense. And I was watching the character of Desi. And it worked for me. The uh, period depiction is great it's you know it's the desi lu studio set in the uh what was that early earlyish 50s i believe this this occurred sorry about the history lack of history dates there but uh one of the questions was can nicole kidman pull off being lucille ball doing screwball comedy and the answer is she doesn't have to in this movie because that's not what this is about you don't really see endless, re thankfully, you don't see endless recreations of I Love Lucy skits because you ever see that biopic of the Three Stooges that was done for TV? I'm not saying it wasn't good. And I'm not saying the performances weren't good. 
I'm just saying watching somebody else pretend to be somebody doing material you really know generally doesn't go over so well. So they don't do that here. It's about, it's a, it's a drama. It's about behind the scenes drama. It's about Lucy de dealing with Desi's infidelities. It's about the, the Lucy and Desi dealing with the network and the sponsor. Are they gonna lose their show? It's them dealing with staffing issues. And it really shows the brilliance of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz in what they brought to TV, how they changed TV in terms of format and technology, how they broke race barriers, how they did so many amazing things, which I also, you know, the, me listening to that Plot Thickens podcast helped me realize that too. But uh, it really portrays them quite well. Desi doesn't come off as, you know, a knight in shining armor dressed completely in white, but he wasn't. And Lucille Ball comes off as sometimes putting the show and the career over other people's feelings and relationships. But if that's what it took to become the icon that she still is, you, you might say it paid off. So being the Ricardos, I saw in a theater, um, as I say, not a wildly cinematic movie. I mean, again, you're, you're talking about mostly Hollywood sound stages. It's, it's mostly interiors for this film. But I always say see it in a theater because in theory there are fewer distractions and you can just get drawn into the story more. It's available on Amazon Prime. So if you have Amazon Prime, it's free. It's free, it's free streaming there. And uh, it's totally worth watching. At home, it's probably gonna be the only option. And with all films, unless they become magnificent classics, that's where they're gonna live forever is on your TV screen. So I would, I don't know if I would say I highly recommend being the Ricardos, but I think it's, it was quite good, very well done, very respectful to the, uh, the subject matter and uh, fun to see a few faces that you might remember from TV past sprinkled throughout the cast. So on Amazon Prime, maybe if you're lucky in a local art house theater or theater chain, being the Ricardos.